So how much should you charge for your work? I don't know. How much are you willing to be paid for it? How much are you willing to do it for? Are you willing to do it for free? Then maybe you should do it for free. Are you willing to do it for £100? Do it for £100. Are you willing to do it for £3,000? Do it for £3,000. The key thing is that it's fair. You consider it to be fair. It's got to be fair. I'm sure you are hoping that I'd be able to provide some sort of market rate. I'm afraid there is no market rate. I mean, there is a market rate, but no one's going to pay you that when you're starting out. So consider what you get in return. Are you going to get some visibility? Is the production going on in a good venue? Is it with a good producer? What sort of cast is going to be in it? What directors involved? What sort of connections are you going to make? These are all valuable things to consider when you are thinking, well, what am I going to get back? Should you do profit share? To my mind, the only companies who should be doing profit share are those at the very beginning of their life. And really, for them to survive, anything that they make should be poured back into the company so they can continue making work. Because the thing is, with profit share, often there are no profits. You might have been offered a job with a young company that's just starting out, but you think that they're really exciting and that they're really going to go places. Les Enfants Terribles, Complicité, Knee High, they all still work with the composers who were with them at the beginning. So sometimes it's good to take a risk. As long as you're enjoying what you're doing and you think it's fair, it's got to be fair. If you're watching this, chances are you don't have an agent. Secret. You don't need one. If you're a writer, an agent will mainly take care of your contracts for you and your invoices and those practicalities. What they won't do is get you work. It's different from an actor's agent. They'll put you up for jobs, whereas a writer's agent takes care of your contracts and your invoices. Having said that, they're really great to have. So consider the venue that it's going to be on at. Consider how many people are going to see it. Consider whether it's fair to you. Consider how much work it's going to be. Consider who the director is. Consider who is in the show. All of these should come into play when you're considering how much money you should be paid. The most important thing is you support your family, pay your rent. There are a few different ways you can be paid. One is the commissioning fee. So you could be commissioned to write a show. Hooray! This will usually be paid in three parts. First third will be paid upon signing your agreement. Second third will be paid upon delivery of the first draft. And the third will be when you finally finish the show and you've headed it over for a rehearsal draft. This money is yours to keep. Don't let anyone take it back from you. This amount should technically cover the time it takes you to write the show. So if you're a fast writer, it can be less. If you're a slow writer, Royalties can be a little bit dangerous. This is a percentage of the box office. Typically in musicals, it's divided three ways. 2% for the book writer, 2% for the composer, 2% for the lyricist. But really, it's up to you and your collaborators. So the most important thing with royalties is that you don't take a royalty on the profit. Make sure you're paid a royalty on the box office, not the profit. You might be offered an advance on royalties to make your show. This means that you might receive a thousand pounds to write a show, but the first thousand pounds of any royalties you were due to receive goes directly to the producer. Ideally, you should aim for both. You should be commissioned and you should also ask for a royalty. But again, it's what's fair to you. I've been paid fees ranging from 200 pounds through to seven and a half thousand pounds for similar jobs. I always considered them to be fair. Actually, no, that's not entirely true. Sometimes they weren't fair, but I did it anyway. But I didn't know any better. Mm. I'll give you some examples of splits that I've done, which I considered fair. So early in my career, I took a £250 flat fee and a 3% on the next box office. I considered it fair because the writer was a talented writer, who I ended up working for again in the future. And two young producers who were interested in musicals were involved. It was booked for the Edinburgh Fringe and it got a lot of press attention. Later in my career, I was paid £3,000 as a commissioning fee and then 1% of net box office royalty. I considered this fair because it was a fairly big show that was gonna to be touring nationwide through really big regional venues 
thousands and thousands of people would see and hear my work. There would be a lot of press. I would be working with creatives at the top of their game. It would be a big learning curve. It would get national press coverage. And of course, I got fired from that job. I didn't think that was fair, but still. So that's it really. Make sure it's fair. Make sure you're getting your money's worth for what you're being paid. Are you getting something back? How much time are you spending on it? Can you make a living while you're doing it? And for those market rates, check out the ITC agreements. One day you'll get there. You see that law